What is psychical research? A popular opinion says that it means going to seances, holding hands in the dark, singing hymns, and perhaps getting in touch with your dead relatives. But in this, popular opinion is only partly correct because it is confusing a psychical search with a spiritualism. Well, this project um, comes out of an interest to try and tell new stories about um, objects in science collections and also our magic collections like the ones here at Senate House. We wanted to um, draw more attention to objects that maybe uh, on first view people don't understand that they've been used in the scientific testing or investigation of psychical research. Some of them, like maybe the typewriter that you might see in this room, look quite mundane. Um, uh, but we want to show how important we were in this period that we were studying to try and evidence once and for all or debunk once and for all the idea that there is another world and, and maybe can, people can understand these collections in new ways. Several substances reacted. Some are with the familiar tingling sensations of the filter and others much stronger to the extent of feeling a kind of stiffness or cramblings. As a researcher, I am obviously addicted to archives. Um, and the Harry Price archive is just incredibly rich. Not just the transcripts of the sittings, but also um, some of the relationships behind the scenes, some of the, the tensions, as in any field of research or any endeavor, there were personality clashes, there were different ideas about what was happening, um, as you would find in, probably in any laboratory anywhere. The challenges that, that Harry Price faced um, to just keep, um, keep the work going, keep it um, supported and to keep it credible, keep it validated because obviously the field of psychical research um, was continually subject to um, being attacked, being undermined, being treated with suspicion, being seen as a, as a threat and as a danger um, and something that needed to be taken down. Um, but I think what really struck me um, from doing this project and from bringing to life some of Harry Price's work was um, how different he was to um, the Society for Psychical Research, which was a more establishment organisation founded in the 1880s, whereas Harry Price's laboratory was founded in the 20s. Um, and there was a lot of tension between those, those two organisations. We may require a fully equipped laboratory, which I'll show you. If a man comes to us and says that he can produce abnormal... I think that was very important uh, from the outset uh, with uh, uh, working with Lawrence was that we would have sound in the room and then you'd have this other layer of, of actually being able to listen through uh, um, earbuds or earphones and have that kind of strange uh, feeling which actually does, we managed to, we, we were trying it out for the first time today and uh, we were quite surprised how, how well it, can, it works. Well, it's just absolutely amazing to almost like step back in time and hear and see his experiments and yeah, because obviously being a paranormal investigator myself, just that link. Um, it's just amazing to hear it. Yeah, I mean, this obviously provides a window into the soul of Harry Price and to be that, that connection, it's just absolutely amazing. What really comes across from Harry Price's approach is just how democratic his paranormal research was. There are these moments in his, um, in his work where he's actively encouraging his readers, his listeners, try this at home um, in, in a very serious way. He wants, he wants people to experience this for themselves. So it was just great to be able to, to bring that to life again today for, for visitors. They can come in and hopefully um, they will feel like they're experiencing some of this for themselves. Bye. 